Hey Yarn Lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room here in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Wednesday, December 16th, 2020 and this is video number 87. So I alluded to what we're going to talk about today in the intro clip and they were drying at that point in time when I recorded that over the weekend. So yes, it is the hand-dyed yarn that I got in involved in over this week. It was a three-day uh, experiment in the kitchen, so I'm um, eager and excited to show what the results are and talk about some of the uh, types of yarn that I over dyed or if I used bare yarn, which is the yarn that you purchase from the stores purely to do dyeing, uh, so they come in an, uh, like an off-white color. Um, you can get them in various colors, but my ones that I used were from Knit, Knit Crate and knit picks and they were just an off-white like a cream colored base that I used but also I used some store-bought yarn where I found maybe the color wasn't exactly the one that uh, I liked so I wanted to over dye and change the color up a little bit so uh, some of these were from store-bought uh, purchases and also some were from mystery boxes so uh, yeah, if that kind of stuff interests you, stick around. Uh, if you're new to the channel as well, hi, I'm Gary, welcome. I'm the host of Urban Yarn. And uh, yeah, I set this channel up to talk about all of my yarn journey. So that involves knitting, crocheting, uh, dabbling in hand dyeing in the kitchen, nothing on a huge scale, just small, which I'm eager to showcase in this particular episode and I talk sometimes about like uh, where I purchase my yarn so either online or in-store and any tips that I can give and share along the way so if that kind of stuff interests you please stick around and if you do enjoy it give me a thumbs up and think about becoming a fiber friend by hitting the subscribe button down below and to the subscri uh, subscribers coming back and my fiber friends welcome back I want to just say thank you for all of the delightful messages in the past couple of uh, videos that I've posted. I've kind of fallen behind with catching up with everyone's re uh, comments. So responding has taken me a little bit of time, I guess just life, uh, getting stuck back into work, work has rolled back in, and also uh, getting in the kitchen and dyeing up this stuff did take time. Uh, so yeah, I will catch up and you know, make sure that I heart everything and I also read everything. So uh, yeah, just a little apology there. <laughs> and I uh, hope everyone's doing well. So let's get stuck into the podcast and I will show my first set will be the store-bought stuff or the mystery bag stuff or mystery box stuff that I purchased uh, online and in store and I will leave the bare yarn to the last. So uh, the first one that I've got for you is Peyton's Classic Bull Worsted. So it's a worsted weight yarn. Here are the details. I won't go too much into them because it's more about the dye up job. It's 100% wool. It's not, a, it's not a rustic wool like some 100% wools can get. It is a little toothy, but it's not by any stretch of the imagination, uh, the worst type of uh, rustic wool there there is out there. And uh, I don't have any of this left. I didn't cut a piece off to showcase what the original state was, but in my previous video, which is uh, 86, towards the end of the video, I have showcased the intention part of dyeing, and I hold up the original state of all the yarns so that you can see if you want to go back there and have a look at the original state what this one looked like so this is the first set that I dyed I had three hanks of that and I'll show you it hanked up first so this is one of them it's in a kind of a warm brownish tones a little bit of yellow there's uh, also a slight green in there as well and black so we have a nice warm hank now with a lot more, uh, I'm gonna call it more depth of, of color range and tone. Whereas before it was just a light gray mull with a off-white. So it was all pretty much the standard color throughout. But now it's, it's jazzed up a little bit <laughs> and it looks like something I would jump to use more readily or more uh, 
yeah, it calls to me a lot more to use it than the original state that it was in. So I, I did two of these and I'll showcase the unhanked version and or the unwrapped version. And here it is here. It turned out to be still the same kind of feel. The dye did not make it crusty. Uh, it's still quite the original state it was. Very kind of nice and soft for a wool, 100% wool. And these are the colors. So just show them off here. Yeah, so lots of earthy tones with with the with the black in there to give it a little bit of depth. Wonderful. So that's that one. The third one in that range, which was the uh, Peyton's Classic Worsted, is this one here. This one uh, was inspired by Christmas, so it does have a very, very lime green that goes over the top of that grey marl that I just described to you, and a nice kind of ruby red color that goes over the gray as well. So the gray acts as a base for the colors to be uh, slightly richer to begin with. So it's not a bright set of colors because the base has already been kind of dulled down, so to speak. So this is the, I'll unhank it so you can take a look at the different colors in there. So there's that sharp streak all the way down the middle here of that lime green, how it sits on that uh, base and then two flanked by two red, um, I'm going to say red rose or red, these two here and then black on either side of that. The way it turned out was just stunning. So again, it's sort of like there, but it's sort of hidden inside of the the fiber the hank how it's sort of like you know placed i really really like this one a lot as well so that's that one the next one i have was an experiment to a different yarn base and it is hobium's just wool and it wasn't an original uh gray color so not a pure white and this is 100% recycled wool. And I do have one of these to show you that I had uh, left in its state. So that's it, that's the color there. And I over dyed this with greens and speckles. So the first two were these two. So they have um, this one. I was trying to do a little bit of a gradation here pack. So this one has more yellow in the green and this one is more of a bluish green. So we have a little bit of a transition there. And what we have here are some speckles of, I don't know what color I put in there. Ah, fuchsia. I did fuchsia in, in the speckles. So I'll just unravel this one. So you can take a look and and I, I think I used a bit of blue as well. Blue and fuchsia speckles. Really, really nice gradation there. So what I had done with these was I experimented uh, it in twofold. I had a pot of color that I was dunking in the, the hanks and I slowly fed from like the tip of the, the hank all the way up to where I was holding it with my fingers. So I was kind of like creating a graduation that way. And then what I did was I put it into a pan and speckled over the top of that. So I had a base gradient to begin with and then I did the speckling on top of that so here's the other one here, which is more of the bluish green and speckles. Again, yes, they are the uh, blue speckles in this one. So it gives it a bit more dimension than it was in the original state. And here are two other ones that I 
did on a more of a lime green colorway uh, using fuchsia again. So we have the fuchsia and the lime green with speckles in blue. Uh, so those ones worked out really, really well. Oops, sorry, I just knocked the chair. Uh, just show one. And again, the dyeing didn't do anything to the stage or state of the of the yarn. Uh, it kept it the same. There's that really bright kind of lime greenish color there, and uh, yeah. So there's the, the speckles. This one looks really weathered, like <clears throat> it. Uh, I think it would work up as a nice weathered looking piece. So uh, if you're going for that effect, or uh, if I wanted to do, say, a, a cowl or some sort of uh, thing that looked uh, and weathered, I would choose to go with something like this as well. Just a really nice, beautiful colorway. And those are the four that I had done with this yarn. And now I've got three more of these smaller hanks, and because uh, it proved to be a great result. Uh, I'm going to do the other three as well in my next uh, little my le next little experiment. Moving right along with the other experiments that I did for the purchased yarn, either from a store or in a mystery ba mystery box that I received. Um, these ones here. Uh, this was the original state that I bought it, and it's from Hobium Yarn. Again, it's Kartopu, and it's the Angora Natural. And those are the stats should you need them. The color originally on this one, I'll showcase it to you in a moment. It's a bright blue, or a light blue, I should say, very sky blue color. And that's not the original. Here it is here. This is the way it looked. Really nice yarn there, but again, the color was not really uh, in my palette range. Uh, this At this point, I had run out of the yellow when I got to the uh, experimentations for these uh, hanks that are, I'm showing you. And I had blue as my, like a navy blue that I purchased from Michaels. And this was the acrylic writ. Uh, so, the acrylic writ actually took very, very well to this particular hank because the majority of the hank is acrylic. So I believe it's 80% acrylic. Yeah, 80% acrylic and 10% mohair, 10% wool. So I got a really nice color change in the from the original to the darker tone. And I would use this over this, or I could blend them now that I've got this nice rich base uh, in a few hanks, I, I did three of them. Um, I think I can now introduce this as a second color or a, a tonal value to the other, the other three. And I can see myself wearing a garment that has the majority of this color and a small uh, like highlights or some sort of key elements in this tone here. Really, really nice. It didn't do any damage to the to the yarn. The thing that I discovered about using this one and making sure that the color was in there, I cooked it a lot longer uh, in a simmering uh, pot. Uh, normally with the wool yarn, all the dye is gone by, I'm gonna say 20 minutes of uh, simmering in the, the water. Whereas this acrylic one needed an extra half an hour. So it almost took a whole hour for the dye to go inside of the hank. Um, yeah, but really love the change up there. The colors are just stunning. And if you look closer, I'll open up one. You can actually see that it didn't take the color evenly across the saturation of the of the yarn it has a little bit of mottedness I don't know what blotches or how you want to describe that but it gave it a little bit of a 
variants in color so tonal a slight tonal variation whereas the original one was pretty much the whole solid color with no tone in it so this one is more of an interest uh, in the final result I think than the original the second test that I did was on a mystery yarn and I didn't know what the composition of the yarn was so I was doing a little bit of a test to see what type of dye would uh, stick to the fiber base that was in uh, the original yarn so this is a Kramer yarn and you may have seen this being in uh, presented by other youtubers in their mystery boxes that they purchased from Kramer yarns and uh, it's this blue color here now I tried to, to use an acrylic base uh, which uh, and and then also a wool a wool base like an animal based dye and it didn't really take very well so when I was rinsing out it came out a nice uh, blue color from the pot straight out and then once I was rinsing it the color was just coming out and just a little tint of it remained so the bottom one is the original and this these top two here are the over dye that I had done in the uh, acrylic writ dye and I have a feeling that this is cotton because when I had the experience with doing cotton from Michael's, the, I think it's called the Comfy Cotton uh, or Cozy Cotton, Cotton Cream, that's what it was called, Cotton Cream from Loops and Threads, when I was uh, dyeing it using the wrong uh, yarn, uh, the wrong dye for cotton, it acted the same way. It was an acrylic that I was using and uh, I needed to use a different dye. So I think now I know that this is cotton. I'll try another dye to use for this one. But a slight tint there of a different tone, but it was a quite uh, dark navy blue to begin with that I was using to try and change the color. It's the same blue as this one actually. So yeah. Back to the drawing board with that one, I think. Uh, the next set, now that all of those ones are done, I'm gonna be talking about the next set, which is the uh, bear yarn that was purchased for dyeing originally. Uh, and the set that I'm gonna showcase you in this one right now is the Wool of the Andes from Knit Picks. And those are the details there. And what it is, is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, just got a message. And it was generously uh, put into a, a yarn swap with me and Kit. Hi Kit! And Kit is from uh, All Things Crochet and Knit with Kit. Uh, it just was like an off-white color. And this is what I did with them. This is where the majority of my yellow went when I was dyeing up for a green color. So these are slightly different. This one here is uh, more greens and yellowish greens. And this one is greens, yellowish greens, as well as some, it's like a, I'm gonna say an orangey rusty color. So I'll open these hanks up too, so you can see what they look like. That's the color there. So, really, really beautiful, uh, different garden greens. <laughs> Love this one. It turned out so magnificently beautiful and nothing happened to the yarn. It didn't get crusty. It is still quite a, a soft wool. And the orangey base one, which uh, has the green as well, the same style of green uh, foundation gradient that I had put in. And this one also has uh, been speckled with the, the brown color here, like an orangey brown. Super, super nice. I can't wait to work up these to see how they look. And soft enough, maybe not for a scarf or a cowl, it is, I'm going to say uh, for a wool, it's a soft wool, but uh, definitely you could make a, I could make a, a beanie out of it or 
put it into a, um, a wrap of some sort that I would wrap around the outside of my garments. There goes a siren. <laughs> uh, the last thing that I had in the experiment was, uh, let's have a look here. Two more things, sorry. We have a Knit Picks that I also uh, over dyed. I'm sorry, this should have been in the first lot that I showcased because it wasn't a bare yarn to begin with. This one was one of Knit Picks original uh, Hawthorne series, I think it was. Hawthorne fingering weight, it's called the Comfy Speckle. And that was a white based yarn with just multicolored uh, specks throughout it. And the specks weren't very heavy. They were quite a light speckling. And should you need the details, here is the details for the yarn that I over dyed. Uh, so yeah, it is turned out like this. I should show you the hank first. So again, I love this weathered look. I used some, uh, I'm gonna say they're kind of like a tones of brown, corals, a little bit of the green tint as well in there as well, but very, very washed, a washed looking, uh, a washed looking green. So more kind of like the browns and oranges in there. And I speckled it as well uh, as a second stage to the dye pot. And I, it became more of a heavy speckle in these blues that I added into the, um, the piece. So this one is going to work up with a more weathered looking style, which I really, really dig. Similar to the other Just Wool that uh, I showcased a little earlier. And just love that. Amazing. And again, very, very soft yarn. This one you could wear as a cowl for sure, or a scarf around your neck. Absolutely, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. The uh, final two that I have were purchased from Knit Crate, and they were uh, from Dyer Supplier, which is the supplier that uh, supplies the Knit Crate with all of their, I guess, bases. And it is 75% superwash, merino wool, and 25% nylon. And it's fingering weight, and these are the details on the bag. I had two hanks of these, and I did them in these two colorways here. Uh, this one here is more grays and greens with a little bit of brown running through there. And this one here has more of the browns and chartreuse colors, as well as a yellow green and speckled as well. So everything I did was kind of uh, tr uh, twofold. I did the, except for, except for the experiments on the Kramer yarn, as well as the mohair yarn, those were just one flat color. Whereas everything else I did in a pot first, getting a gradient, having a base, and then speckling over the top. So I'll just show you this one here. Absolutely love these. So there's the colors in there. There's some heavy speckling there of blue, like a navy blue. Really, really love that. So again, it could make a nice cowl or a um, shawl. A shawl would be a good one. And this one here is the one that has some gray in it. And minty mint greens, like a washing of the green that I had started with. And then it has the olives, olive colors. Oh, and here it turns into more of a it's like a raspberry red or a, a, a really ruby red. Really lovely. Again, same same fiber base. I love them. I think I might be making uh, shawls out of these or cows. I just love them. So that catches you up with my, what I've been up to for the week. And it is around, I'm gonna say almost 2, 2 p.m. Uh, right now. And the, for some reason in the last, 
uh, seeing I, uh, since I had to clear off my phone and get that to the computer and then make some space, for some reason, it just dropped in daylight. It completely has gone. You know, sometimes in the day when you realize, oh, I didn't realize it got so dark so quickly, but here we are sitting at 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon and we are already starting to get shadows in the room. Uh, I can tell by the uh, picture frame here. Uh, so these uh, experiments are probably not showing up as best to color that they, than they should be because of the fact that we are getting some darker light coming into the into the room. But um, really, really nice. I'll add some photographs uh, from when I took them the day that it was a bit more shiny or bright. And uh, you, you can get to see some of the results at the outtakes of this video. Uh, so I hope you're all doing well. I'll see you in a couple of days. I've got some more things planned to showcase in my next podcast or my next video. And yeah, everyone stay safe and I uh, will catch you up in the next one. Bye for now.